Hey guys, happy Thursday. Um, today we're going to kind of move on from writing those equations. We're going to get back to that, don't worry. Um, but we're going to talk about scatter plots. And scatter plots are just a set of points on a graph. Um, you know, maybe we have hours and money hours worked, we'll say. And we have some scatter plot that, you know, maybe those go by whatever. And it looks something like this. You see how we just kind of have a series of points, oftentimes with a table. Um, I don't even know, can you guys see that? Oh yeah, you can see that. Let me move it up a little bit. There we go. So um, our scatter plots are going to tell us a lot of information. Anytime that we have uh, a lot of data that we're compiling, maybe for like research or something, and we're trying to find out is there some sort of connection to these two things, oftentimes we're going to look at a scatter plot, and that's going to help us to tell that. And when we have scatter plots, there's three different things that can happen. We can have a positive relationship. Positive relationship, or you might hear the word positive correlation. I might say that. Uh, or positive relationship. Uh, a positive correlation means as one variable increases the other also increases. So as you look at this scatter plot that I made, um, as you work more hours, typically you're going to get more money. Now notice that I said typically here because we're talking about in general. There's always some instances where maybe that's not the case. Um, we would call those outliers. Like, see this point right here. It doesn't really fit the trend of what's going on with the rest of the data, right? Um, maybe this person is a lawyer and they make so much money no matter what, right? Like, they have a salary and they had to put in a lot of work this week onto a case. They don't get paid extra, they get paid the same amount they always do. Um, but I guess that would they would be up here probably because they're probably going to get paid a bunch of money, right? Um, but yeah, this would be someone who maybe has a salary and doesn't get paid hourly. So a positive relationship is always going to look like it would have a positive slope if I were to connect these points. Um, and it's one thing's increasing, the other's increasing. So they might not give you a graph. They might say, hey, what about um, temperature and ice cream sales? what kind of relationship would happen. When they ask you that, you're gonna think of as one of them increases, what happens to the other. So as the temperature goes up, what happens to ice cream sales? They also go up. That is a positive relationship. Notice that as the temperature decreases, ice cream sales also decrease, right? People still buy ice cream, but not as many as they do when it's hot out. So that's still a positive relationship, which is why you always want to think of it as one goes up, what happens to the other, okay? Um, so it's okay if they both go down, it's the same, that just means they both go up. The second option is a negative relationship. In a negative relationship, what's going to happen As one variable increases, the other variable decreases. So this time, as one goes up, maybe the x's increase, the y's will decrease. Like that. 
that would be a negative relationship. And again, we can see that if I connected these with a line, that line would have a negative slope. So therefore, we know it's going to have a negative relationship because the line is decreasing as it goes from left to right. Now, if you want to think about what thing, uh, as one increases, the other one decreases, that would be something like um, maybe cardiovascular exercise and weight. As you increase your cardio, in general, your weight will decrease. That's what happens, right? Um, obviously, there's people who are in such good fit. Uh, my buddy Stephen Falte is out there who runs every single day. He's not losing weight. He's at, because that's his typical routine. Um, but if I ran as much as Steven did every day, I would be shredding pounds, okay? Um, and just because it's negative doesn't mean it's a bad thing. Sometimes people think negative relationship, it's probably not something good. That doesn't have to be the case. Um, obviously, weight loss is maybe a good thing, right? If you want to lose weight. Um, but it could be as... Um, your hours increase that you work, your debt decreases. So you owe less money to maybe your student loans and your credit card bills and your mortgage and things like that, right? So that's good. And anyone would say that's good. We want to get rid of our debt. Um, yeah, so anything that as one of them goes up, the other one goes down, that's going to be a negative relationship. All right, the last one that can happen when we're looking at a scatter plot is no relationship. No relationship. And no relationship, we think that's stupid, but it basically is just saying that the variables do not Effect, effect, effect each other. And you're thinking, yeah, who cares, you know? Um, the scatter plot would look something like points all over the place. That would be a no relationship. That's not really telling us any info. But what's interesting is that no relationships do tell us some information. It tells us that these two things don't affect each other. So think of these, these corporations, these companies who are doing um, testing right now on, on COVID-19, the virus, right? And they're saying like, oh, we want, we want to get this vaccine out, you know, like what kind of things uh, would affect it? Well, if we do research study and we say, oh, I wonder if people who are diabetic can take this vaccine. And we get data that's kind of all over the place. There's not a trend. That's telling me a lot of information. That's saying, hey, there is no effect of uh, just because this person has diabetes that they can or cannot take this vaccine, right? There's no, no relationship between those two variables. And so, um, this is a really big deal. People spend a lot of money on research in our country yearly on things like cancer and do cell phones cause brain tumors and things like that, only to get information that just says this is not conclusive. That's sometimes a really good thing, right? Well, I can't tell if, if people are getting brain cancer because they use their cell phone a lot or if it's for something else. So uh, we can't be conclusive and say, yes, your cell phone is causing brain cancer. Um, so no relationship does tell us some info. Um, it just maybe seems like it's not the info we want, but that's not always the case. Um, so those are the relationships. Those are scatter plots. Your homework tonight, you're just going to kind of like look at them and say what kind of relationship there is. We're going to be dealing with scatter plots and, and data collection here for the next couple days. And then this is pretty much what your project's going to be on. You're going to come up with I'm going to give you some data. You're going to have to plot it in a scatter plot, make a scatter plot, and eventually find what we're going to call the line of best fit. 
Um, but we'll talk about that later. All right, we'll see you guys later.